It's the Downscaler Battle Royale, where seven scalers go head to head to crown a champion. But will the winner necessarily be the best choice for all setups? From the start of the series, my downscaling wish list included 240p and 480i output, no scaling artifacts, accepting 480 to 1080p input, low latency, and robust picture adjustments. Some may want only a zero lag 480p downscale, while others can overlook two frames for the sake of another redeeming feature. So in this episode, I'll compare each downscaler in each category. But first, I want to briefly touch on the other methods of downscaling that I haven't been able to cover in the series. The Ultracade UVC are line blending downscalers intended for arcade cabinet setups. They take PC resolutions, 480p being the main one in the console realm, to output 15kHz or mid-resolution 24kHz. They were sold around 2005 and somehow more unobtainable than the Extron Emotia, and given their scarcity, leaves a lot of information unknown. The Mimo Genius 2 was sold up until 2018, and from what I've read is a 480p line deleter. Retro Bobberino clocked in the lag at a variable 0 to 2 frames, and if you want to see it in action, then I recommend you check out Xavier's video. As I touched on in the last episode, there's Extron DVS and DSC scalers that can drop common video resolutions like 480, 720 and even 1080p down to 240p with custom edited binary files. Some consoles can also be forced to output 240p with no additional hardware. The Nintendo GameCube running the homebrew software Swiss has several video output modes prior to launching a game. Press X to bring up the video resolution menu and select 240p. There's also the Sega Dreamcast that can play a handful of games in 240p by simply holding the Start and L trigger on boot up. And then there's ROM hacks for 240p output. Metal Slug Anthology on the PS2 natively outputs 480i instead of the game's original 224p resolution. The game can be forced back into its native res with a hex edit patch, where it's as sharp as the real thing on a Neo Geo. The final honourable mention isn't technically downscaling, but rather outputting custom 15kHz resolutions from a PC. I'm yet to fully dive into this, but I've gathered all the necessary hardware to build a 240p setup using either CRT EMU driver or Batocera. Now onto some dishonorable mentions. The OSSC add-on board sold by the company who shall not be named. It's intended to transcode composite and S-video to component and RGB, to which it performs terribly. As feeding it composite PAL60, outputs a Bob D interlaced 240p. Damn! To see it in action, Check out my revisiting the Sony BVM20F1 video. Generic HDMI downscalers with composite or RGB output are great for video content and maybe even casual downscaling, but they won't get you 240p. This doesn't speak for all of those generic scalers, but in Lewis and Bob's tests, 
480p down to 480i lag wasn't so bad at 1 to 2 variable frames. It's laughable to even call this last one a proof of concept, but check this out. I've dropped 720p to 480i using an Extron VSC, that's not the funny part, but then ran the video through one of those cheap VGA scanline generators, which are intended for flat panels, but just darken every few rows. So it's still very much 480i with the flicker, plus scan lines that are several times thicker than the real thing. And this is downscaling rock bottom. Now's the moment of truth, the downscaling scorecard, where each category will be worth two points for a total possible of 10. Two points will be given for each 240p and 480i outputs. Two points will be divided three ways for each input resolution, 480, 720 and 1080p. There'll be one point if lag is under two frames, and another point if it's less than one, regardless of variability. The overall quality of the downscale, also worth two points, includes sharpness and colour accuracy. And finally, picture controls will require full horizontal and vertical size and position adjustments for the full two points. Before I proceed, two downscalers are disqualified from the Battle Royale. The DVD-O iScan HD Plus and the Extron Interface Trick. One doesn't work with certain consoles and the other doesn't output 240p to all displays. Want to find out more, then watch their individual episodes and you'll see. The first contestant is the TV1750. With 240p and 480i output, it's 480, 720 plus 1080p input already gives it full points out of the gate. The lag isn't terrible, but also not ideal at over two frames when 720p is downscaled to 480i so no points there. But half a point for being just under two frames and non-variable for 720 down to 240p. The image is soft, but only in comparison to the line deleters, and its smoothing of jaggies might actually be preferable to some. It needs a bit of setup, and the picture controls are quite difficult to navigate, but the set and forget presets should have the image filled and centered every time. Therefore, the TV1750 sets the bar at 8.5 out of 10. The GBS as a standalone downscaler only outputs 240p but not 480i and only takes up to 480p. But its redemption is having less than a frame of lag. Unfortunately, my still shots came out looking piss yellow, but had I adjusted the contrast and brightness, would have looked equivalent to the other downscalers. So it is definitely sharp with no detrimental artifacts. Although it does have picture adjustments, the vertical scale button is just unresponsive. Therefore, it gets a 6.7 out of 10. The DEX outputs both 15kHz resolutions, competently downscale 720p, but 480p VGA inputs still jitter even after the recommended GPIO pin to ground fix. Oh, come on! But if 480p was needed, then it is stable with component video. Contrary to what's listed in the DEX's wiki, it actually does downscale a 1080p input with about 2 frames of lag but has these sparkling green pixels on every console I tried, so I'd classify the DEX as a 480 and 720p input only. 720p takes 2.2 steady frames to downscale to both 15kHz resolutions, otherwise in line multiplier mode, 480p is essentially zero lag. The DE10 Nanos HDMI output is easily the sharpest of all the downscalers, and has the flexibility of outputting aspect preserving 16x9 within a 4x3 window, as well as stretching to full 4x3. I also can't fault its fluid picture controls, 
scoring it an impressive 7.8 out of 10. The Retro Tink 5X is nearly identical to the DeX in execution, with the same input and output resolutions, but no funky 1080p input. It takes the cake with next to zero lag 720p downscaling and clean 15kHz output. Now, I stand corrected in saying that the Tink 5X shimmers on everything. As one would expect, it needs to be fed perfect vertical integer upscaled video, which I was unaware in the Tink 5X episode that it wasn't receiving exactly that. So not at all a fault of the Retro Tink 5X if it shimmers on line doubled or line tripled video. Sorry Mike. But it's also a byproduct of the line deletion approach that you won't see in line averaging like in the TV1750. It still stretches 16x9 video to fit the 4x3 height, splaying some assets over several scan lines which distorts 2D sprites. It's softer than the DeX, whether that's because of the 422 HDMI output, I'm not sure. It's just a fraction less liberal in its extraneous picture adjustments compared to the DeX, but not so bad to penalize it. So the Tink 5X's total score is 9.3 out of 10. The Extron Emotia seamlessly outputs 240p and 480i and does accept 720p inputs, but only gets it as low as 480i. So I guess that's still worth something. It has only one frame of variable lag and a relatively sharp output, but terrible color reproduction. And like the GBS, the picture adjustments are good, but also lacking vertical resizing. Therefore scoring it 7 out of 10. In third place of the downscaler battle royale, the DEX add-on for the DE10 Nano. Only held back by the 2.2 frames of lag when downscaling 720p. In second place, the Koryu 2 TV1750. The only downscaler to competently accept 1080p, but was again hampered by variable lag. And in first place, the RetroTINK 5X Pro, being only a 1080p import from a perfect 10. So there you have it, my top 3 recommendations. Thanks all for watching, and happy gaming. But wait a minute, aren't I forgetting something? Yup, the price. At 325 US dollars, excluding shipping and tax, the Retro Tink 5X is also the most expensive. And is it really worth shelling out that much cash purely to downscale? That really depends. If you're willing to spend the money, then I think you'll be very happy with the Retro Tink 5X. Otherwise, consider the TV1750 is currently less than half the price on the second-hand market, and unless you have a simultaneous comparative reference, I doubt anyone that's used a Corio 2 for downscaling would complain about its buttery smooth video output. And if you can live with the slight lag and softer scaling, you're getting one of the best performing downscalers. Otherwise, if you're a Mr. Owner, the basic DEX kit, apart from zero lag 720p downscaling, is more or less equivalent to the RetroTINK 5X for a third of the cost. If you're on an even stricter budget, just want a low lag 480p to 240p downscaler, there's no better option than the GBS. And if you need a 720p input, there's always piggyback downscaling as I showed in episodes 2 and 7. As for the plug and play Extron Emotia, for the price they sell for, doesn't justify its features or lack thereof. But hey, if that's the unicorn you're chasing, then I completely understand and I hope you find one. Considering that I now have all these downscalers to choose from, you'd think I would have chosen the RetroTINK 5X or the TV1750 in my setup. Well, in actual fact, I've gone with the since it's nearly identical to the RetroTINK 5X, 
With slightly sharper output and that I wasn't hindered by the two frames of lag, I chose the decks for two specific reasons. One is that I just didn't have any inputs left on my GSCART switch, so I'm fully embracing its dual function as a mister by simply changing the SD card, and therefore no additional input was needed. And the second reason is that aspect ratio preserving 240p output. Basically, it's 16x9 within a 4x3 window, and take a look what happens when I first get it displayed on my widescreen CRT. Aspect ratio police, freeze! Calm down, I'm not finished yet. You need to see this. The widescreen CRT has a cinema mode for vertically stretching 4x3 video, and not only does it restore the full 16x9 aspect ratio, it does it with hyper-pronounced scan lines. Compared to the Dex doing the 16x9 stretch, I'd argue that the Grundig Cinema Mode closes the gap to a low-end Pro monitor, and I'm a sucker for scan lines. It's a lesson that the best downscaler on paper might not be the ideal unit for your setup, so don't forget to consider the outlying details that are unique to your individual setup and needs. So what does the future hold for downscaling? If the same line discarding method is ported over to the RetroTINK 4K and OSSE Pro, apart from maybe 1080p inputs, then probably nothing new. However, the more 4K scaler will be interesting. Pixel FX have marketed the Morph as a modular scaler with an HDMI input and eventually analog output, as well as 240p downscaling so it could very well be the simple plug-and-play downscaler we've all been waiting for. I've pre-ordered mine, so we'll have to see if its release date firmware gives us what we want. Low lag, and hopefully 1080p downscaling. Thanks all for watching, and happy gaming.